Hello everyone, it is I, the Reverend Godfather, the main host and front man for the Long Coat Mafia podcast. I do apologize for my voice, I'm getting over a cold, and my voice has been sore and scratchy for the past week and so, or so. But for today I want to do at least two things. One is uh, a basic unboxing, and the other thing is basically we were tagged in a post over two weeks ago, or give or take a few days, by Sasha the Princess of Darkness in reference to answer a few questions. That's what we're going to try to do today. And what we're going to unbox is this, what we got today. And it is the Super Nintendo Classic, or the SNES Mini. Uh, basically, uh, what a lot of people have complained about this uh, is that it is the... it. It's kind of like an all-in-one console, but uh, to step back first is that this is the second generation classic edition that Nintendo has put out within the last year. Uh, the first one being the NES Classic, or the NES Mini by some, which um, ended up in a little bit of controversy. Not so much controversy, but uh, problems, because uh, Nintendo uh, kind of limited the production run, not... Uh, the aspect of how long, but overall, meaning that even though the production ran until roughly February, March of this year, they didn't really mass produce a whole hell of a lot of these, the NES minis, uh, when they were out, and scalpers got them, and they jacked up the prices in some instances, let me take this out of my ear, uh, to over 500 Dollars and after that, the uh, Nintendo Switch came out, and when that uh, came out, Nintendo said we're going to be releasing this, the Super Nintendo Classic Edition, with about 21 games into it, uh, for about 80 dollars. And we we heard you as fans that uh, we are going to kind of increase increase production and so forth and so on to help kind of minimize the scalpers reselling them for a couple hundred dollars a piece. Now, mind you, there are scalpers selling NES minis for roughly 100 to 200 dollars. Not as much as the NES minis or the NES classics, depending on who you talk to, but uh, right now I picked up this proud NES classic edition for 80 bucks at GameStop. It was the last one they had. I've been hearing rumors that uh, Target's been having a whole mess of them at the Target store near me. I didn't see any. I don't know where they might have had them. Uh, I've heard Best Buy had a whole stack full of them. Uh, I I didn't want to wander into my Best Buy today to see if they had any, but um, but my GameStop had at least this one. Uh, like I said, it has about 21 games a part of it. A lot of it I've some of it I played, a lot of it I did not play. Uh, I'm glad I did. Uh, a lot of the diehard retro gamers out there uh, said, you can, you, know, you don't really have to spend $80. You can get all the, the ROMs, and you get a Raspberry Pi, you can get uh, the emulators. The thing, uh, in my opinion, as I said before, that with the emulators and the ROMs, they're, to me, they're kind of iffy. Uh, some are better than others, but in order to do get the right emulator and the right ROMs, you have to be a part of the retro gaming community at, at, in some fashion. Uh, so there's that whole aspect. I'm, I'm a casual guy. I don't have the time or the aspect of researching which ROMs might work, which ones are this, which ones are that. And uh, there's the whole legality of uh, the ROMs in reference to... Uh, it, should you have the ROMs unless you have the, the cartridge? Uh, but that's just me. And the, the thing about this is that uh, there's a whole mess of people out there that uh, were not really into the retro gaming market. So th something like this is perfect for folks like myself. Uh, now, mind you, I do have this that I picked up uh, a few years ago. It is the huge original Super Nintendo, and it weighs about a pound, maybe two pounds, but not more than that. But the thing is, with something like this, uh, most TVs, including the flat screen that I own, you're able to still hook something like this up, but the cartridges range from 
maybe ten, five, ten dollars, up to a couple hundred dollars. I think Earthbound is like two, three hundred dollars. Uh, but with uh, a couple of the games on here, like Legend of Zelda, is if you bought the cartridge itself for this system, it will set you back about twenty, thirty dollars. Final Fantasy three slash six, depending on the country of origin you picked it up as, goes about sixty bucks. That's an SNES cartridge, sixty dollars for th again for this system with no guarantees that that cartridge might work. Now, I'm not saying all retro gaming shops are bad. There is a lot of great retro gaming shops that are out there. Here in Martinsburg, West Virginia, we have Panhandle Games. Uh, there, I've gotten a lot of working games from them, most of which are between 5 and $10. But I don't have the money for 60 bucks for one game. For me to get three games out of this, it will set me back $300. $400 probably. That's not including the $50 for this and whatever hookups I might need or extra controllers. So something like this for 80 bucks, good deal. And it comes with like Final Fantasy 3, F-Zero, Donkey Kong Country, the Super Mario games like uh, Super Mario World and Super Mario, uh, I think it was supposed to have like uh, two Super Mario games. Uh, I see a Super Mario RPG. I thought it was supposed to have the uh, Yoshi's Island. Uh, there it is. Uh, so that's that. It, it has it has a lot of games that I wanted to play and wanted to try out and I heard a lot about. So this is a great deal. We're going to open this up. Like I said, uh, we also have a questionnaire from... Sasha that she tagged us in a few months a few weeks ago so let's open this up and see what we got we'll go through with it now mind you this is uh, sans the uh, game list of games right here this is basically what the uh, box looked like when it initially came out just much larger on the side of the uh, box tells you about the, the console on the other side it tells you about the controller and what I found interesting on this on the flap is this is that you know how you're playing with superpower, which is which is kind of cool. Oh yeah, the, forgot about the bottom of the box. Standard legalese that uh, flashing this might some of the games induce flashing and then it might trigger uh, an epileptic fit. So it's a standard uh, warning. So, let's see if we can get this out here. <clears throat> Boxes is detail out. Guts are out. Here we have the uh, standard legalese. Folks, we'll get to that in, in a minute. Here's the uh, the coffin with the, the stuff inside. Let's pull out the, uh, what looks like the main system here. Here it is. Look how tiny it is. I'm able to palm the, the sucker. It's about uh, four inches, maybe five wide. It's about the size of my hand. Uh, the uh, power and the reset buttons both work. But this doesn't open. Nor this this work like it would in the larger size. Uh, comparison, here's the uh, larger one. It looks like it's about uh, three of the when compared to the original. The mini is like maybe three total, two and a half. But uh, what would have been cool is that uh, even though this is not really expandable, uh, it would have been nice. Uh, as I stated before, that it would have been nice if this was open up and Nintendo sold like uh, equivalent of Amigos that. Uh, we're able to put in here that way you can expand past the 21 games but uh it's it's very tiny it's very cool looking uh it's got the uh hdmi port in the back and the power port and the power port looks a lot like the uh uh cables you get for your android phones so and 
with this. Wait. I was wondering how the controls would fit in this. Uh, the, the front low flap comes loose. And there's the way you plug in your controllers. The, about the my impression for this, uh, my first impression is that because this is very loose attached, that it could be easily broken off in some weird way. Uh, so uh, if you have little kids, be forewarned that this can be broken off, even though it snaps in nice and tight. Let's see here, we have standard plug for it with the USB input. The USB cable for the power. And let's see here. The HDMI cord. I'm not gonna I don't when it's in plastic like this, I don't really un I'll take it out because you can see what it is. What what's the point of uh, taking it out and measuring it? Um, seems like a decent size I'll be able to hook it up. We got uh, two controllers, which is nice. And from what I told told when this one one of the wraps fell out. It's tangled up. I don't wanna break it. I just got it. Uh this is what the controllers look like, at least one of them. So there's that. And the plug is the plug right here. And from what I'm told that these are the same plugs for uh that are for the like the Nintendo Wii and the Nintendo Switch. Not Switch, uh Nintendo Wii and the Nintendo U. So uh if you have a, from what I'm told, that uh, you're able to use that for uh, for this system as you know extra controllers. Uh, it, if you do use the the Wii controllers or the Wii U controllers on this, please let me know if it works uh, in the comments down below. Uh, so there's that. Let's open up the uh, legalese. Let's see what's part of that. It should be the standard legalese, but let's take a look. Let's see here. Yeah, this is just, uh, this one here is the standard warranty info and warnings, probably. Uh, so, I'm not going to really open it up, because it doesn't look too much that it is with that. Then we have the uh, startup instructions, so like how to uh, hook it up to your TV, and the standard multi-language format for uh, the area. But, um, what it appears to fold out as is this major size poster which is kind of neat uh oops, let's kinda, there you go and it uh basically so now you're playing with superpower kind of going with the super nintendo uh theme uh tells about uh legend of zelda f-zero star fox super mario kart super metroid and super mario well we'll get back into i'll put stuff back in the box and uh back in order in a little bit when I'm done with the video and it's up lately. Like I said, for something like this, uh, uh, a lot of people are like, eh, Raspberry Pi instead of this. I'm a casual guy. This is perfect for me. This is uh, an official Nintendo product. Um, not like the Sega Genesis system that's out there, the classic uh, Sega Genesis and the uh, Atari Flashbacks, which uh, I'm not knocking those systems. Those are great, especially if you're a Sega Genesis fan or an Atari fan and you want those consoles in your home they're nice and small they're great for little kids but then again with something like this uh, the, the flimsiness of this little hatch um, I'm sure both things uh, will look all, all three types of consoles will look great on like a a coffee table ready to play in your home but um, the thing with the flashbacks, uh, Atari flashbacks in the uh, classic uh, Genesis console is the fact that uh, they're not really uh, authorized, not, I won't say authorized, but they're not really from Atari or they're from Sega. They're, they're licensed through Sega and they're licensed through Atari. Therefore, you're not going to get the high quality and the quality assurance you will through this a Nintendo product like this. Uh, I'm glad that I managed to catch one and score one. Uh, I will give you a, a better view when I get through uh, the video games I have to go through right now. I picked up several from, as you might have heard through our last podcast, uh, I picked up several on Black Friday. 
in regards to uh, video games for our Xbox One, in which we'll be starting to stream those games at, on Mixer.com shortly. Stay tuned to our Twitter account. Link to our Twitter is down below. Uh, in regards to that, so uh, please excuse me while I take a drink. I know it's bad form to take a drink while recording a video, but again, I've been sick. It's sore throat. throat. I need some Dr. Pepper. So, there's that. Now for Sasha's questions. Uh, like I said, Sasha's uh, tagged us in reference to uh, the who's, the what's, the when's, and the where. Uh, it says, uh, answering 10 questions from, 10 questions tagged from Geek Legion of Doom. Uh, there's 10 questions here, various things. Uh, question number one. If you could name your child after any video game or movie character, who would it be? Uh, I'm going to uh, say Roland. Uh, Roland from Borderlands. Uh, it's a strong character name, and it's not goofy. It's a, it, it's a strong name, it, especially since uh, Dark Tower came out in, from the movies, even though I didn't really enjoy Dark Tower uh, as a movie based on a book. Uh, th think Ron Howard did the best he could. There was probably a lot of studio involvement with that, but I digress. Uh, I'm still going to have to say Roland for that. Uh, question two is uh, favorite childhood food. Uh, I'm going to have to say ice cream. I can't go wrong with ice cream. Uh, I remember chasing an ice cream even though I'm a fat boy. I was not always a fat boy. Uh, I remember chasing an ice cream truck as a kid back on Long Island, New York. And a lot of great ice cream trucks out there. Uh, so, I'm going to have to say that. Uh, grabbing shakes and ice cream from the back of a truck. Who, uh, legit truck, not those weird, creepy vans. Uh, question three. Which childhood book of yours still holds up to this day? Um, I don't know. I would have to try to reread them. Uh, because I used to read... Uh, Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing and uh, Super Fudge when I was a kid. Uh, come to find out, there was like two other books after that uh, that I didn't know that uh, that particular author wrote. So uh, I might have to look in, uh, contact Uncle Tony uh, to see if uh, he can score me those books uh, in ebook form. Uh, and that way I can reread them and see if they actually hold up and continue past that. Uh, those two books because it's kind of hard to say you don't really reread ch uh, child books uh, like you back when I was growing up we had like Super Fudge and Tales of Fourth Grade Nothing we had nothing like Harry Potter or uh, uh, Maze Runner or Ender's Game like for kids like us uh, we had nothing like that now a lot of the uh, from the 90s and the early 2000s, you had the the Hunger Games, you had the uh, Ender's Game, you had Harry Potter, you had these books that, uh, especially uh, a series of unfortunate events that were great for kids and young adults. Oh, we didn't really have that you, that transition, uh, a quality transition. So I'll have to check back with with you in refer with all of you in reference to that probably later on. Uh, question four is Simpsons, Rick and Morty, or Family Guy? Um, I'm going to have to say, uh, Rick and Morty. Uh, yes, I like Rick and Morty. I'm a fan. I'm not an angry fan. Uh, I like it more than Family Guy and Simpsons. Uh, I think Simpsons is overrated now. It, they should just, uh, uh, stop. Uh, they, uh, they, they keep going on and on and on. They've been doing it since the early 90s. Uh, I think they're hitting close to 30 years uh, doing what they're doing. So it's, you know, I think they should st officially just stop. You know, they, they've been doing it long enough. They had their run. Uh, I think sh they should just bow out gracefully. As for Family Guy, they're better, they, they've jumped the shark too. But uh, they still might have a little bit longer to go as the show. Uh, but right now, Rick and Morty is right up there. They're pushing edges. Uh, not a, like how South Park pushed edges in their early days. But they're trying to. Rick and Morty is kind of trying to push an edge, and it's kind of working. And I like that. That's why I, I, 
I'm more of a Rick and Morty guy. Uh, question five is, what actor would best narrate a movie of your life? I'm going to have to say uh, Samuel Jackson, Samuel L. Jackson, because uh, my life requires a few curse words. So, uh, And he does, a, a, I'd say he'd do a very good job in reference doing that. Uh, what more can I say? Uh, uh, I'm not knocking Morgan Freeman, but uh, I'd just rather have someone on the quality of Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, number six. Which horror-related character do you relate to the most? Uh, I'm going to have to say Pinhead from Hellraiser because he's the most uh, intelligent uh, out of a lot of the... Uh, classic villains out there or horror villains out there uh he's more uh, logic based as well uh when you see him especially in one two four uh, i know a lot of people don't like bloodlines and five uh but uh Especially in five, you see more of that uh, logic because the actress that played in the first two movies returns in five, and Pinhead actually relates that, uh, "Hey, this is why I like you. You you make a deal because that uh, spoilers. Uh, that's the twist in five is that uh, she makes a deal with Pinhead because." Uh, Pinhead pretty much finds her again through the box, uh, and he says, well, we meet again, you know, about time I'm able to collect you and bring you back in, and she says, pretty much states that, uh, how would you, instead of having just my soul, how would you like to have, like, three or four others instead of just mine, and he, and he pretty much turns to her and says, this is why I like you as a, as an arch nemesis because you are he pretty much says you're like me you you think uh you're you're very uh a, you're a worthy opponent for me so uh, that's why i i rather uh relate to him more than like a freddy character who's more of a joker uh, he's more just a one one-liner, and that's it. He's He might be intelligent, but he's not really intelligent, intelligent. Uh, question seven. Rainbows or unicorns? Uh, I'm going to have to go with unicorns, especially since the classic definition of a uh, unicorn is uh, in reference to... Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, sorry, folks. Uh, the classic definition for a unicorn, for those of you out there, uh, is pretty much a animal that is has the body of a horse, skin of an elephant, and a singular horn on its head, which is the definition of a rhino. And that picture is is not a pretty animal. Uh, as you can see, I'm not a pretty person. Uh, but... Uh, uh, Overall, the, the image that we know of, of a unicorn now as this beautiful horse with the single horn has only been around about 100 or so years, maybe 200 years. Uh, but uh, I always go with the classic definition with nobody seems to realize. But I digress. Uh, number eight. Uh, which movie would you like to... The, which movie that you watched as a child would you like to see remade today? Uh... I kind of discussed this with my co-host Big Candy in an earlier episode that we did uh, as a podcast episode. Uh, this might have been a couple months ago, and that movie was Monster Squad. Not so much the uh, uh, we talked. We didn't really discuss the the kid at the kids aspect of it, uh, but we kind of spoke on the monster aspect of it. That we'd rather instead of seeing the uh, sea creature. Uh, part of it, or the uh, uh, imitation creature from the Black Lagoon, or the Lagoon creature, uh, we'd rather see like a more modernized, uh, or a uh, knockoff Jason, or a knockoff Michael Myers uh, character in that spot, along with the a classic Dracula, uh, 
classic Frankenstein and uh, classic Wolfman, but the for the money we didn't want the classic uh, bandaged head and toe type of uh, character. That we'd rather see a Brandon Fraser type mummy or a Tom Cruise type mummy. Uh, personally, I'd prefer seeing a type a Tom Cruise type mummy, meaning a female in that type of role. Uh, to be, it could be used as a, uh, like a love interest for Dracula and still keep the aspect that the, uh, mummy is more of a, uh, like a, a wizard or a magic user of some sort, uh, spell user or spell caster in order to further emphasize the, the movie, but, uh, still be able to keep the campiness of it, um, uh, to kind of go on. Uh, number nine, British accents or American accents? British, British, something about British, um, uh, especially when I'm gaming, I like to, you know, it, it's, it, hearing a bunch of, uh, uh folks from across the pond just go all out and curse in, in uh, atypical British fashion is something to hear, uh, I've always enjoyed it, so, I'm going to have to go with that. Uh, number 10, more zombies or no zombies? Uh, I'm going to have to say more zombies. Uh, can't hurt with more zombies a, a lot of the time. Uh, but it, I'm going to have to say that question overall is kind of tricky because sometimes uh, you could have that instance where uh, one zombie is just enough, but two zombies is too much. But... Uh, I'm still going to have to go with more zombies. But uh, that's it for right now. Uh, I'm going to have to ask you, uh, not ask you, uh, I'd like for you guys, uh, if you wish to follow us on Twitter and Facebook and uh, so forth and so on in Instagram, links are down below in the description. Uh, but as always, uh, if you wish to follow us on Twitter or Instagram, both uh, are uh, Long Coat Mafia. Uh, if you wish to leave us a com uh, comment, or your opinion on any of these questions, please do so down below in the comment selection. Uh, don't forget to click subscribe, whichever it might be. Or, uh, once you hit subscribe, please ring that bell for notifications when either one of our many podcasts are added to YouTube or a video like this is also added to YouTube. I should be doing more soon. Uh, that being said, again... Uh, as I said, we will be, uh, at least I'll be trying to stream more on Mixer with several different video games, including Call of Duty and probably South Park, Fractured But Whole. But, uh, so please stay tuned to our Twitter channel, which is Long Coat Mafia, uh, to get our uh, Mixer.com's a link provided. So uh, stay tuned there, uh, stalk us there on Twitter. Uh, but if you wish to also uh, follow us on Instagram, again, that is Long Coat Mafia. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash the long... Uh, excuse me. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash the long coat mafia podcast. Uh, if you wish to listen to our podcast on the go instead of listening to them here on YouTube... You can easily do so by going to our website, which is thelongcoatmafia.podbean.com. And yes, the word the is part of the uh, web address. Or if you wish to uh, download on your mobile device, we are available on iTunes slash Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, or their Stitcher app, the Podbean app, and Google Play Music as well. So we are... Since Stitcher, the Stitcher app and uh, the Podbean app are both uh, Android and iTunes compatible, so it doesn't matter what system you, you download those apps on, uh, and you're able to at least subscribe to us on the Podbean app absolutely for free, um, as well as get our shows for free on iTunes and Google Play Music. So... Uh, that's it. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful time and uh, listen to our shows either on the go or here on YouTube as background noise. As long as you listen, you could come away with a, uh, learning something new in some instances. Uh, again, thank you for watching. Thank you t for listening. Uh, don't forget to hit subscribe, the bell, and leave a like on this as well. Thank you.
Bye-bye.